And now I'd like to uh, uh, re request Dr. Edward Yap uh, to speak on the topic of traditional Chinese medicine, antidotes from history to present. So Dr. Edward Yap is a registered traditional Chinese medical practitioner, physician from Singapore. And I'd like to request all the speakers to kindly uh, maintain the time, else this will have a cascading effect on all the other sessions. So we'll be, be running behind time. Thank you. Testing, testing. OK, um, a very good morning to each and every one of you here. Um, my name is Edward, and I'm from Singapore. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm having some cough. <coughs> Okay, uh, Singapore, for your information, is uh, located in between Malaysia and Indonesia and is part of Southeast Asia. So in Singapore, there are a lot of uh, races because it's a multiracial society. And we have uh, Chinese, Malay, Indians, and Eurasians. So over the last 10 years, there are also some other immigrants from uh, Philippines and Myanmar, apart from China and India. So from all these races, they have their own traditional medicine. So for the Chinese, normally we use Chinese medicine, the Indian Ayurveda, and the Malay, they will use Jammu. So they have a preference over whether they want to use the traditional medicine or the mainstream medicine. So in Singapore right now, uh, a lot of hospitals, they have uh, a clinic especially meant for acupuncture. So right now, uh, for those patients who need, they can have treatment at the hospital at the same time. They can go to the acupuncture clinic and have treatment. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to share with you what is this traditional Chinese medicine is about and how these healing arts of more than 2,500 years is still applicable in modern society. <coughs> Okay, traditional Chinese medicine, in short, is called TCM, and to the conventional medicine is considered a complementary and alternative medicine. So complementary means something you work together with, the conventional medicine, for example, using acupuncture in addition to having some pain killing. And alternative, you can choose CAM instead of the conventional medicine, using herbs rather than using drugs. <coughs> And the word uh, TCM in Chinese is called Zhong Yi. Zhong in uh, Chinese, uh, it, it means, uh, it can be refers, from a micro point of view, it refers to Zhong Guo, which is China. So Yi in Chinese means medicine. So if you see from the micro point of view, Zhong Yi it refers to Chinese medicine from China. But in actual fact, Zhong Yi has a deeper meaning. So if you were to see from the macro point of view, Zhong actually means middle. Yi, as usual, uh, medicine. So this Zhong Yi in Chinese actually is trying to bring the unbalanced yin and yang back to middle path. It's just like in Buddhism, we have the middle path. So Zhong Yi also has this concept of trying to balance harmony in your body. And this is the objective of the TCM treatment. So TCM originated from uh, ancient China, as has been for many thousand years. And a lot of the terms are taken from the ancient philosophy of Taoism. And it's quite different from the Western medicine because there are a lot of terms that is very abstract and difficult to understand using modern analogy. Yeah. So of course, the first and foremost, yin and yang concept. So this is borrowed from the Taoism. So in this yin and yang concept, everything in creation is categorized under yin and yang and is guided by the law of unity of the opposites. So this yin and yang is complementary to each other. At the same time, it's there's a restrictive relationship. They are in conflicts, but mutually dependent. So they need to be harmonized in order to reach health. OK, so let me give you a very good example of how you can see yin and yang. Okay, uh, when we go for blood tests, uh, let's say we go for blood tests in the hospital, and then after that you can get the results. So 
in the results of your blood test, let's say uh, under the category of the red blood cells count. So it's normally there's a reference range of say about 4 million to 6 million. So if let's say if it's below than 4, then that, that could be an indication that you are anemic because there's not enough red blood cell count. But then let's say if you are more than 6, then it could have an indication of your blood flow maybe decrease or slower. Yeah. So if you were to see from this reference range, 4, you can see it as yin, 6 as yang, is an extreme. So anything that is more than 6, we will say that is, there is an excess of yang. So let's say if anything that is less than 4, then we will say that there is a deficiency of the yin. So if you were to use modern uh, application, this is how you say it. Get it? Okay, I can give you another example which is applicable in our daily life. Okay, we, we know that this yin is something related to cold and yang related to hot. It's just like the moon and the sun, you know. So let's say in the winter, <coughs> when you on the tap to take shower, the water tends to be more cold, right? So it's considered yin. So in order to have a hot shower, then you have to boil some water and mix with the cold water. Then you find that it's lukewarm, just nice for the for the body, and that is where you reach the equilibrium. You can see the cold and the hot, they are opposite extreme, but when they are mixed together, it becomes complementary to each other. So this is how we apply the yin and yang in our daily life. So as mentioned, the yin syndromes, if you were to use in a TCM application, is normally uh, showing like body feel cold when you are touching the patients, fatigue, lack of thirst, and patient prefers more warm drinks, and the urine are more clear and loose too. So for the young syndromes, because it's a heat, so you have flushed face, body feel warm when you touch, they have bloodshot eyes, thirsty, prefer cold drinks, and the urine tend to be in yellow color and hard stool. There's also this concept of five elements, metal, wood, water, fire, earth. So these five elements support each other and oppose one another and thus is able to maintain the balance in the body. And we put all the main organs, the lungs and the large intestine under the metal, the liver and gallbladder under the wood, kidney and urinary bladder under water, heart and small intestine under fire, and spleen and stomach under earth. So you can see that uh, there's a relationship. So the five elements are always in constant move and change and they are interdependent and that will help to maintain the balance in our body. There's also this concept of qi, which is very critical in uh, TCM usage. Qi, if you were to interpret, is the energy. So if you were to use uh, the nature form, it's just like a river where you have the current. So you will, with the current, the water is able to flow as compared to a pond or lake where there's no current, so there's no qi. So this is how you see qi in our body. Then of course blood, uh, we know that it's inside the blood vessels and it nourish all parts of our body. And in the case of blood deficiency, patients will, will surface something like pale, complexions, dizziness, numbness of their limbs, and pale tongue. And this is also a very important concept in the TCM, the meridians. The meridians are like channels in our body that links from the surface to the internal organs. So any stagnation uh, in the qi will make the body out of balance. And that is why we use acupuncture to stimulate the points to activate the qi. This is an example of the meridians. This is a lung, uh, Meridians. So it, it, it starts from the uh, lower part of the abdominal. It, it links to the large intestine and then it goes up. And then the dotted lines, you can see the dotted lines, those are the, the line, connecting line inside the body. The one, the solid line on the hands are the points that we can use acupuncture. This is another uh, stomach meridian from the head to the 
feet. And in TCM, we, we see the human body as part of the nature. So uh, being part of nature, <coughs> you need to be harmonized with your surrounding so that your mind, body, spirit can heal itself. So in terms of diagnosis, we use these four methods. Okay. So first, observation. So when the patient comes to you, we will observe the complexions, whether it's pale, the tongue, whether the, the tongue has any indications, like uh, uh, it's very thin tongue, thick tongue, or you know the color of the tongue, and the eyes also, the hair, the lips, and the skin. So hearing and smelling. By hearing the tone of the, the patients, you are able to tell whether the patient is more of a, a, a weak nature or a, a someone who is hot temper, and the breathing patterns and the breath. We also ask about the, the history of the illness and what are the treatments that have been done and the symptoms and how the patient feels. Of course, pulse is the last part. Then that is a summarize of the qi and blood in the body of the organs. So the pulse reading, we actually break down in the left and right. So we have the inch bar cube on the left represent different organs and the right also different organs. This one is quite similar to the Tibetan medicine except the bar which is a switch, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So with the pulse reading, we are able to evaluate the strength, you know, how powerful the pulse is, the rate, the rhythm, and then from there we try to summarize with all those uh, we gather through the, the four methods, and then we have a summarize. This is an ancient uh, text about the pulse. And after you manage to gather all this information, you will start to use the different modalities to treat. So depending on the nature and uh, ailments, then we'll use accordingly. Sometimes you can use one, or sometimes it's a mixture. So of course, the first and foremost is the Chinese medicine herbs. So the herbs, it can be plant-based, seeds, roots, leaves, fruits, stem, flowers, minerals, and animal parts. So the form that we take, it can be in soup, medicinal soup, pills, powder, sometimes ointment, medicated wine, and capsule, yes. So the purpose of all these medicines uh, is to target at these strategies. Perspiration. Perspiration is normally used when you have fever. So by making uh, you to perspire, so you, are get you can get rid of the heat. Vomiting is used when you have taken something uh, wrongly. Draining downwards is like when you are having some constipation. Yeah. Harmonizing is when there are conditions whereby you have the heat and cold inside your body. So you need to take some herbs to harmonize the body. Warming herbs is used when the, the body is weak or cold. Clearing is when there's heat in the body. Reducing is where there's some swelling. And tonifying is only used for weak and cold body. So these are the herbs we have categorized and targeted at these strategies. And uh, one of the unique features of TCM is, of course, acupuncture, using needles, and uh, it's disposable, one-time usage, and it's made of stainless steel. So how does our acupuncture work? So a lot of research has been done, and it was said that it's, it releases a pain-killing mechanism called endorphins, and also it has uh, better functions of the hormone systems. But uh, there are more to it, yes. So how is the feeling like? It's, it's unlike uh, injections because it's very fine. And uh, the feeling of acupuncture is heaviness, soreness. You can feel a bit of pressure. But on the general, it's quite painless. And sometimes in the middle of treatment, patient will just doze off and go to sleep. And the next moment, you hear them snoring. So this is how it looks like. In the ancient time, there are also other forms of needles. So these are some of the needles where they actually do some very minor surg surgery. So is acupuncture safe? Uh, nowadays, yes, because the needles are more disposable. But uh, before that, you need to give some, some pre-existing conditions 
like whether are you having cardiac pacemaker, cosmetic implants, and the name of medication that you're taking, especially in the uh, area of warfarin, blood thinning medications, aspirin, and or whether you are pregnant or not. Acupuncture has been also used on animals, like in the zoo in Singapore, there are also some practitioners use acupuncture to treat animals. <sighs> then the other one is moxibustion. Moxibustion is the use of herb, the mud wood, which is uh, in a dry form, and then is burned to create the heat. It comes in this form, so the, the dry leaves are wrapped up and become a stick. This is the ancient chart of using moxa. So the purpose of this moxa is to warm up the region of the acupuncture point and to circulate the blood and chi in the meridian. So how to use it can be in direct form or indirectly on top of the acupuncture needle so that the heat can penetrate in. We can also use on top of a ginger. You can use on top of the salt as well. So moxa is used for stagnant, uh, cold, weak conditions and uh, it can help to increase the immune system, low energy, fatigue, and menstruation cramp. Next, we also use cupping therapy. is by creating a vacuum in the cups so that it can uh, suck on the skin. So by doing this, it can help to draw the blood to the surface. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, different cups. You have the bamboo, glass, and the plastic. And it's mostly used on these areas, back. There are some that use on the facial as well. Cupping is generally safe, but then uh, uh, it also has to depend on certain conditions, like if you have inflamed skin, you bleed easily, pregnant women will try not to use it. This is more of the extreme cupping, and this is uh, a very bad cupping done. <coughs> So in cupping, we have dry and wet. Dry meaning we just put it there. And then we also move around. Wet is more like releasing blood using a lancet. And then we suck out the blood. So conditions that can be used are these. These are the street people doing the cupping in China. This is another way of fire. Okay, there's also another uh, treatment we use, Gua Sha, which is scrapping. So this is to scrap the heat off. So it's uh, like a pressurized repeat stroke onto the skin. So the tools we use are all these, and we apply a layer of uh, oil, and we just scrap from top to bottom. So this will cause the blood capillaries to break up and release some of the red blood cells. So this, in a way, can get rid of the toxic. This is the result. These are the conditions that is not suitable. Facial guasa is very commonly used in Singapore for those women who want to look good because by doing the guasa on the face, it can help to promote the collagen and they'll look more firm. Tui na is a kind of massage. Okay? And in Chinese, uh, there are different types of tui na. In pediatrics, it's a different form of massage for the child. And of course, qi gong is a kind of exercise that we actually promote the flow of qi. So through certain actions, certain movement, it can help to regulate the breathing and also to store the energy. So normally qi gong is done early in the morning because the early sun is the best for the body. So uh, normally they will do uh, when the sun rises and then uh, it is part of the preventive measures. <coughs> this is an ancient picture of the uh, Qigong. Yeah, so basically that's all about TCM. Thank you. So I'd like to thank Dr. Edward Yap uh, for your uh, talk on TCM. And thank you very much for maintaining the time also.